For the second consecutive year, my AFL team, the Melbourne Football Club, have been chewed up and spit out and booed off stage in a semi-final. Back to back, straight set departures. Late in the season, there was a decision that went the way of the Carlton Football Club. That is a goal! Which sent the D's from a home qualifying final against the Lions. Yes, yes, Unbelievable! To an away qualifying final against the Pies, the best team in the competition. Uh, the D's rallied themselves, threw everything at that game, and just fell short. After that game, I saw Christian Petrarca say in an interview that the boys left everything out there on the park. Yeah, it's really flattening. Um, kind of, we left it all out there in the last quarter. And I thought, that's not good. We have a game next week, track. We play footy in seven days. I found the differences in the football club reactions to making a semi-final quite star. Carlton fans were going crazy. We're into a semi-final. How good is this? And Melbourne fans were going, oh my God, we're into a semi-final. This sucks. We obviously lost key pillars going into the game. Gussie Brayshaw was out through a devastating collision. JVR was undisciplined. Our forward line was decimated. We play an informed Carlton Football Club. We throw everything at the Blues and it was a contest for the ages and it was one of the games of the year. through an accuracy and an inability to seize the moment, we lost. Now, I think this final series will hold our group in great stead going forward. Progress is not linear. The Brisbane Lions have lost finals after finals after finals after finals, and now it appears that they're really well placed to go all the way. Our footy club pinched one on our second crack at it. We finished ninth in 2020, we won the flag in 2021. We just won one straight away. So I always felt like 2021 was a little bit early. Now this year felt like we were really poised to go deep. We built differently into the season. We had key personnel go down throughout the year, which we covered for. Salem missed a big chunk. Clary Oliver missed a big chunk. And then our forward line was pretty much decimated throughout the year, but we made things work until we couldn't. When my man Harrison Petty went down, we found a way. We found Jakey Melksham. He straightened us up. He won games off his own boot. When he went down, we were really clutching at straws. I was so surprised Brody Grundy didn't come in. I have a weird conspiracy theory that the club went, well, if you're leaving, why would we play you? I understand, but I'm also disappointed because I think we needed the great man over this final series. If Brody Grundy does leave, I'm going to be sad, man. I, I love... I love Brody Grundy. Everyone loves his personality. I'll be disappointed that we gave up on something so early. I saw Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron take a year to click. I saw Jake Lever and Stephen May take a year to click. So I'd be disappointed after 15 or 16 games, Brody Grundy departs. Say they did play 15 or 16 games together, I would say six of them were in torrential downpours. I don't think it's a big enough size sample to be able to put a line through it, but I do understand the urgency from Brody Grundy's point of view, given he's entering into his 30s and he wants to be playing AFL footy. But I thought we needed him over the weekend and I was pretty cut that the great man didn't get the nod. To me, I, I felt like leaving the Collingwood game that we weren't going to make the grand final. And going into the semi-final, I said during the week that it feels like we're playing off in a bronze medal match. It, it, it felt like it was sort of two teams that can't and won't go all the way are playing off. And I feel like for our footy club, we deserved a bit of sustenance for making the top four for consecutive years. I felt like we deserved to to win one in front of our fans. And, and I felt like we deserved to make a prelim, but we couldn't get it done and it was through our own fault. I'd never seen this team so rushed and rattled in a big game or in a big couple of games, to be honest. I feel like in big moments, we've really risen to the occasion. We've played in a lot of 1v2 games. We played in a lot of top four defining clashes. There was a huge one last year against Freo. We went over to Perth and won by 40 points. Last year, there was a, a top four defining clash. We had to beat the Lions at the Gabba and we won in a, in a big Friday night match. Uh, we've won big King's birthday matches, Anzac Day Eve matches. There's been huge games that's defined our season that we've been able to rise to the occasion. So 
a little bit disappointing that we couldn't get it done this year and a little bit disappointing that we looked rattled. It, it's it's the most rattled I've seen this side since the 2018 prelim. I'd be surprised if Petrarca, Oliver, Viney, Brayshaw, May, Lever and Gorn were defined for being rattled in big games. I'm putting this down as an outlier. I feel like this final series will hold us in good stead going forward. I feel like Judd McVee, Bowie, Rivers, JVR, Petty, Tommy Sparrow will mature over the next year or so. I feel like our core group of 27, 28 year olds haven't reached their ceiling yet. So I see a lot of maturity in this group that has me so excited. And I have a feeling we're gonna be thereabouts in the next few years. One of my favorite things about Geelong is that Chris Scott says, you've got to give yourself the best chance every year. And to give yourself the best chance, you've got to finish top four every year. I would rather be a team that makes top four every year and goes out in straight set than a team always finishes fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and wins one or two finals, but never really had the chance. You know, if a Caleb Marchbank touch goes a different way, we have a home qualifier and we've finished second. In 2021, everything went our way. The Bulldogs slipped out of the top four and had to go the long way round. We beat Geelong in the last game of the season to send them to Port Adelaide. They lost Tom Stewart late. The Bulldogs won through to the grand final, but they had gone the long way round and they were cooked. And we were really fit and healthy. So to go all the way, you need a lot of things to go right. And oh my God, did things just go so pear-shaped on us to end this season. There's three ways we can go in the off season. We have a massive draft hand. So option one is trade our picks up for a higher pick and go for generational talent. Now there's talks that that is Harley Reid. Really does wet the whistle and it gets me excited. The other option is to take those draft picks that we have on offer. The last time we took three draft picks in the top 30, we got Pickett, Jackson and Rivers and it shaped our premiership side. So that really does wet the whistle and get me excited as well. The other option people are thinking of is going chips in on a key forward and dragging them out of somewhere. Now the key forwards are contracted everywhere. So I don't see this being a real option, but our draft hand is there if we want to pull the trigger on that. I'm bullish about our forward line next season. Harrison Petty is a one grab forward. He marks the ball with one grab. I haven't seen a one grab forward in the Melbourne forward line since David Neat. Harrison Petty clunks the pill for fun and he is a huge body, 197 centimetres. I'm glad we're trying to keep Adam Tomlinson because we need that third bigger body in defence. And I think, do we go a little bit money ball? Do we go for a Ben Mackay? Do we go for a Tom Duday? Shore up the defence shore up that hole that Harrison Petty leaves in our defense and play Petty forward. I said that to Connor Rogers and he pissed himself. He said, um, you guys have been criticized for not having a key forward all year. And in the off season, you go and get a key defender. And I did laugh at that, but that's an option. Shane McAdams is coming to the football club by all reports. I think a forward line where it's McAdams, Petty, Fritch, Cozzy, JVR, and then a Joel Smith, a Charlie Spargo, a Cade Chandler is a half decent forward line. That's all I'm going to say on the Melbourne Footy Club. I'm really bullish about us going into the future. I think we'll be right there again next year. And I think round one next season, our 22 is better than round one this season. Once again, guys, I appreciate all of the support. Thanks for listening to me waffle about my football club. Um, some exciting finals to come. I've got some content coming next week, which I think you'll enjoy. Um, but until then, I'll see you very soon. Cheers.